it's Sunday morning and it's not even, it's not even that early, but I've got sleep in my eye and, and out of focus camera, but that's okay. Uh, briefly, the two winners for the Ludia toque, which I should be wearing, but I'm indoors, so I'm not wearing it. But the two winners for the Ludia toques, and thank you to everybody who entered. There were some amazing entries, and uh, it, was, it was really cool to see. And I see that a lot of people have it way worse than I do, which isn't that difficult considering I have pretty ideal conditions to be playing Jurassic World Live under but a lot of people have it way worse than I do. So the Twitter winner is gonna be Brady, and I hope I'm saying this right, Brill, and his picture of a Trico, which already has a toque. So maybe that should have disqualified Brady from winning, but um, that's a lot of snow. <laughs> and then for the Discord winner is gonna be Austin with a really cool picture of a uh, Spino to Raptor? Spino to Spino, 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 Spino. Anyway, thank you again to everybody who entered. And um, we just got word as to the dinosaurs of the week for next week. But like I said, I just woke up. So I'm going to need to get some coffee to get my day started. And then we'll talk about preparing for next week because it's kind of a good one. As I mentioned before, we do know the dinosaurs of the week for next week, and they're actually pretty good just upon first glance. So after I've had a couple days to kind of look over these and formulate a better idea, I may change my mind, but as of right now, here's what I see. Dilophosaurus Gen 2, which was a local 2, moved over to a park only spawn and is very difficult to come by if you're not hanging out in parks. 48 attempts is going to be phenomenal. You also have Monolophosaurus, you have Gallimimus and Diplocalus, but honestly, like there's no reason to go for Gallimimus or Diplocalus. So Monolophosaurus Gen 2, if you're working on uh, Monolometrodon, would, would be the only reason to not go for Dilophosaurus Gen 2. And then on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we're going to have four rares to choose from. You have uh, Diplocalus Gen 2, Kulasuchus Gen 2, and Proceratosaurus, which they're, they're all okay, but you have Dilophosaurus. So again, 24 attempts. Uh, for me, I, I'm not going to do 48 on Monday or Tuesday. I, that's, that would be difficult. I'm gonna try to do 24 on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. That seems a little more like realistic, but so far I'm just going for all the Dilophosaurus, whether it be Gen 1 or Gen 2. And then on Saturday and Sunday, you're gonna have six attempts at Monolophosaurus or Kulosuchus. I keep thinking Kulosuchus is gonna get a hybrid, but without any information on that, I already know that Monolophosaurus is nice for monostegotops. It's also good for monomimus. Monomimus took a pretty big nerf with uh, version 1.5, but it's still rather annoying. It is still rather good. It's just not one of the top five dinosaurs in the game. It's still very annoying. It can still dodge three straight times and pretty much get you a victory out of that. But in the current meta, I think monostegotops is actually the better of the two and it requires source. So as far as dinosaurs for next week, that's the direction that I'm headed. But as for this week, it's not over yet. And as you will see here in just a second, I've not even attempted a single epic dinosaur darting session um, between, was it, is it Tyran the counterattacker? So Raja, Pteranodon, and I don't remember what the third one is off the top of my head. I know I say this a lot, but man, sometimes my screen is so hard to see between having polarized glasses, it being bright out, and it just being a computer screen. Sometimes it's really difficult to see my screen. So there's my first attempt of the weekend. Should probably be able to get all nine, especially when there are three right within close proximity. So there's another Raja, and then, oh, Concavenator. That's gonna be the third and final one there. Make sure you get out and do those. You have till the end of the day. I'm actually going to, like I said in 
the last video, I'm going to pop a large scent capsule. Hopefully, well, I mean, I didn't really want the Quetzal, and I'm not even gonna mess with it. Just, no, I should, it's a rare. I should probably dart the Quetzal. And then I'm gonna walk around and I'm gonna get the other two epics that are on the screen in this area. And then I'm gonna go over and fight that immune creature's rare strike tower. It's a three-step strike tower, so I believe that means that there are going to be two incubators up for grabs on that this weekend. So I need to take care of that. And that will kind of put a wrap on the counterattack creatures for the week. Now, if you are like me and you haven't gone out and darted all of the three different epic dinosaurs that you have to choose from, and today is the last day, so you're gonna go out and do a little grind session, but you're wondering which ones to go after, Raja here is the only one with any kind of a hybrid, and it actually has a hybrid and I believe a super hybrid, because Dio Raja. Um, so, Pteranodon, nothing as of yet, and Concavenator, has nothing, although I think Concavenator has an interesting moveset that it could potentially make for a good hybrid. It just doesn't have anything at the moment. So if you're looking for what you should do and you have options, people in smaller towns typically don't have a whole lot of options. They just kind of have to go with what they got. But if you do have options, I would definitely say prioritize the Raja. But back to next week's dinosaurs. The reason why Dilophosaurus Gen 2 on Monday and Tuesday is of such a high priority to me is because I'm within 50 DNA of unlocking Tenanto Rex, which is going to be my fourth unique hybrid. I just don't ever, I just don't grind enough to consistently get the DNA. Still nothing great spawned. I should be darting all those. And if I weren't creating a video, I'd probably dart all that. But I'm headed over to the Concavenator and then to that rare strike tower. I actually used Concavenator for like a hot second when I was first starting out in the game. It was one of the first rare or epic class dinosaurs that I had unlocked. And I thought it was pretty good. It quickly got outclassed and it's just not that great. It, it, the problem with all of these counterattack dinosaurs is while they do like two times damage when you consider they're gonna get one attack and then a counter attack whenever they survive if they don't survive you only got one attack in and while yes their two attacks combined are usually pretty pretty decent there's just a lot better because a lot of dinosaurs have multipliers on their attacks if you think stegodeus for example stegodeus has a two times rampage and then like a one and a half times Thagomizer, where a lot of times the counterattack dinosaurs just have the one times damage. And while yes, two is the same as a two times damage, as I mentioned before, I would rather have the two up front. And instead of one and then one, the, re the, the reason why counterattack dinosaurs come in handy and the, the, really the only thing that I like about them is if you can swap one in when you have a tight battle and say your opponent attacks into you and then the counterattack is going to knock them out then that's where i like counterattack dinosaurs but that's a pretty limited role although if you look at my team i do have a lot of really limited roles which is why sometimes on my strike team specifically i have a, i have a whole lot of special specialty dinosaurs and so what will end up happening is if i get a really bad draw where the specialty dinosaurs don't play off of each other it kind of leaves me with just a really weak team but i can also get on some pretty nice win streaks and i think i mean i'm almost i was over 4700 again most of yesterday i've lost a couple times but what ends up happening is if i get a, a draw that uses my swap in attacks or my counter attacks with dinosaurs that can impact and run it sets me up really nicely to have some very powerful outputs what ends up happening is if I get like an entire speed dinosaur team, then I end up just like swapping into another fast dinosaur and that's not the ideal situation. So counterattack dinosaurs definitely have a place in the meta. You just have to find the right ones and sometimes that's really difficult and they kind of have to build with your team. I wouldn't just throw a counterattack dinosaur into a team that doesn't really have any kind of a swap in or 
like any kind of use because then I think you're just weakening your team a little bit. Finally, in what will most likely be the last strike tower I do for the weekend, unless I come across something else that I don't know about, I'm gonna take down this immunity strike tower. It's three steps, uh, level 10, Dimetrodon, 11, Secondanto, and 12, Gallimimus. And kind of what I was talking about, dinosaurs that play off of each other. So, like if you have, I'm gonna put my, my Mira into lead, and then, and unfortunately, it's probably not even gonna work out really well. But what I'm gonna do is, the theory behind this is you open, I'm gonna open with the tankier dinosaur. Now you have a bunch of different options. If, if I were playing an arena, I would want to lead with like Triostronix or maybe Indoraptor because Triostronix is immune and a lot of people like to lead bleeders. And then Indoraptor has the ability to take out just about, get, Indoraptor is the one dinosaur I have that can sweep a team. So that's why I would lead with Indoraptor. But for this, and my dinosaurs are probably over leveled and it probably won't come into play, but I'm gonna lead with the tankier dinosaur. And I want the tankier dinosaur, even if it gets knocked out, to do a lot of damage, which is gonna bring in my Dilo. My Dilo is going to need one turn of setup because it's got two single multiplier attack. I wanna do a lot of damage and then swap out where I can get the impact and run, which is a two times damage, swap it into the Draco Rex Gen 2, which is also a two times damage, which more times than not, that is going to completely take out my opponent's dinosaur before they even get an attack in. And then the, the mono at the end of it, the mono stego at the end of it is a good utility dinosaur. So that is, how did these come out backwards here? Oh, because I unclicked it, so that's how. But it's not really going to matter here because, I hope it doesn't matter here, I should be plenty strong enough to take out whatever kind of dinosaurs they throw at me. So there's my counter attack, which is nice, to actually hit through the dodge. Go again with just the one times attack. I don't know how high I'm going to level up the Miragea. Um, like, I don't want to over level it, but I'm finding it very useful. I, I think at even levels, it can take out Spinotosuchus, which is very helpful when you consider that the bleed and then you can regenerate 50% and you're doing two damages, two attacks. It tends to work out really well in my favor. And against the immune dinosaurs that are lower level, it's a beast. <laughs> I know that's not really saying a whole lot because, oh, I should have just gone. I should have just taken the damage. I'm going to regenerate 50% of my health. I think I've been critted every time in a video that I've been running the Miragea by either Secondanto or Triostronix. Whatever the dinosaur is, I feel like they've always critted against it. I'm not gonna do the total tracker like I did last time for how many knockouts, uh, no to the scent capsule, but there were three there. I'm not gonna keep them going though. Uh, same type of deal, I, I could just for giggles. I think just about anything I have here could solo the the tower but I'm just gonna let Mira keep going because it's one of the newest dinosaurs that it is the newest that I've leveled up I could I do have one dinosaur that I need to create which will give me everything that's not a unique will have been created again post Metrodon is going to be the most difficult dinosaurs you're gonna face in this tower which is typically the case. Postmetrodon is one of the better immune dinosaurs in the game. I think I'm just gonna regenerate my 50% health. I don't know that I even needed to do it, but it's gonna put me to go first, so then my counterattack is going to, hopefully, thank goodness, take out my Postmetrodon. So it's a perfect four for four. 
Gallimimus. Level 12, this should be no trouble at all. Unless, of course, it dodges everything. All I have to do is hit through one time, and I'm 0 for 2. Both dodges. So it doesn't look like I'm going to get the clean sweep this time. Impact and run. I could. Okay, okay, there's still a chance. I'm going to have to go first. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do 1800 damage and I'm not going to survive 31. <laughs> it's still not bad. Pop valiantly. Um, everything I have goes faster. I'm going to put in Monostego just because I can do. It'll make a shorter battle because I can go first. I'm going to remove the shield and I'm definitely going to do over a thousand damage. Definitely over 1100 damage. Easy peasy. I think I get an incubator here. Even though it didn't say it, no, I didn't. On the common class ones, after you win two, there will be an incubator there for you. And finally, I'm just gonna go for the for the heat on this one. I'm gonna see if my Thor can take out the entire tower. It really, honestly, it should. It should easily take out all of this tower. Oh, they're gonna cloak. Interesting, that, that kind of changes things up a little bit. Especially if I don't hit through the cloak because then I think I'm going to be hurting pretty badly. If I go through the cloak both times, then it's no big deal, obviously. <laughs> Man, I wish that worked like that in arenas. I feel like in towers, I hit through evasive stance and cloak far more often than I do in in the um, in the battle arena. Could just be confirmation bias. Who knows? It was 55 degrees when I started this video today. I'm, I'm sure it's probably up to 60. I, I'm also sure, from what I've seen on the news, there's so much winter weather across like the middle and the eastern part of the U.S. that a lot of you are probably buried in snow or painfully cold weather right now. And here I am in short sleeves rocking a toque as if I need it and I really don't. And you guys probably really do. And uh, a lot of times these uh, rare incubators can be pretty good for the rare DNA. Now the immune creatures, there's only, like Dime is really the only one that I'm interested in. And I got Ankylo coat on. Oh, almost 500 dimes. So close to a fuse for Magna. One other thing that I want to do before I wrap up this video is from my scent capsule, because I am in a park or was in a park, I was actually able to pull down 673 Dilophosaurus Gen 2. Maybe I can get a 40 right here. No. <laughs> So that was pretty great. What that's going to do is it's going to allow me, like I don't want to be greedy and say I'm going to go for 50, but I'm going to go for a 50. Maybe I can speed up instead of waiting till next week. Ah, oh, 20. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is starting on Monday, we're getting to Nantorex. And then I've got to find a home on my team for it. I don't know what's going to get the what's going to get the boot. It's going to be a tough decision, quite honestly. But set up really nicely for Tenanto Rex on Monday. That should be tomorrow's video. Not for sure, but it should be. That's all I've got for today. Make sure you get out and dart the rest of those epic strike towers if you haven't done all nine attempts already. And congratulations to the winners. I'll reach out to you so I can get the toque going your direction and uh until next time